You know, she mentioned uh, E. He has been, remember what I told you, some people want what it looks like, but they don't want what it feels like. My man has been, he found out at a very early age that his father, who he thought was his father, wasn't his father. He ended up running away from home at 16. And for two years, he lived in abandoned buildings and ate out of trash cans. And who he is right now, I see why he is who he is. Um, and here's a funny thing, we have a decision to make on how we respond to life's difficulties and challenges. Because we can talk about the good if we want to, but the good don't require nothing from you. What requires something from you is when uh, you, you go through a difficulty or a challenge and you get an opportunity to respond to it either negatively or positively. And one of the things that he's always beat into my head is a number of different things. Information changes situations and a whole bunch of other little things that he's been telling me from, it, it, he was with me when I got divorced the first time, seven years later, me and Faith connect back and then boom, we married. And now it's another, it's been over, over seven years now and the seven years that, oh, come on, I feel like uh, Jacob and, and like for real, the seven years now has been sweeter than the last, oh, come on, so oh, man. Um, but what he's told me was that be emotionally whole. Mm -hmm. We can have benediction right there. Uh -huh. And when I say emotionally whole, for those of you who are basketball fans, you see Toronto for real just win the championship. And I, I've been I've been specifically watching the Toronto Raptors and how they operate. The first time they won, no big yeah jumping up all over the place. Even when they won the championship, people were saying, "Oh, Kawhi's not LeBron. He's not Kyrie he, because he's not oh, he not he not you know emotional. Why? Because he's balanced." Amen. Sometimes our wives or our spouses say something to us we don't like and nah, 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 nah. my wife used to have this thing she used to do do nah, nah. i'm like what, you, what is that what are you doing well she used to do, you know number one i know that she needs love and i like need respect and the two are interdependent upon one another if she does that and it's disrespectful to me like for real immediately i turn my ears off right right and then we both lose but even in turning my ears off is still like for real, emotionally irresponsible or immature, why? Because the devil is in the details. Yeah. Why are you tripping the way that you yeah. are? Why are you blacking out the way that you are? Please. Let's get to the core of what that is because we like to deal with stuff at the surface and we yeah. don't like to touch stuff at the root because that causes us to have to go back and deal with some stuff we don't want to deal with. That's right. And so what I've learned to do is become emotionally whole when things are not going the way that I want for them to go does not give me the authority or the autonomy to blow up and respond. If I need to uh, uh, react, if I need to respond, 10, nine, Holy Ghost, I need you. Eight, I'm tempted to respond in a way that I know is not gonna be beneficial. And she laughs at me because sometimes I, I, I speak aloud. In other words, I have conversations with myself in the open. And she's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, I'm talking to me. I'm checking me right now. Right. Seven, yeah. you can go ahead and say what you want to say, but I'm bringing myself back down to two. Right. Because what happens when I'm at two is I can think, I can process. When you're at 10 and above, like the way that you need to respond to a situation, you can't respond. That's good. Because you're too busy thinking about what was done to you. And it's not even something that has been done to you. It's something that's being done through you. God is perfecting you. That's right. That's good. That's why the relationship with him is so important here before you get to here. That's good, dog. You said it a while ago and you were like, yo, there's an order. Y'all remember when you were in algebra class? Like for real. When you working with quadratic equations, it's all, yeah, I was nice in math, yo. When you trying to work out the y-intercept and y equals mx plus b, when you trying to work out quadratic equations, first two, outer two, inner two, last two, and you simplifying and solving for x, there's a reason for that. And inside those formulas is a thing called order of operations. Yeah. Y'all remember PEMDAS? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Yeah. That wasn't me, but come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. If you don't, if you do that any other way, you will not. Let me let me just reiterate. Right. You will not get the outcome that you're looking for. That's right. That's 
Right. And so some of you putting kids before your wife and you putting your wife or your husband before God. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. You solving for P or Q, but you definitely ain't solving for X. But I realize that there's an order in operations. And when I go, God first. Wife second. Kids third. Come on, I can't become one yeah. with my children. They would like for me to, but I can't become one with them. The word declares that you can only become one with your wife. With your wife, Doc. Yes, so sir. she is the number one priority outside. And even sometimes with her, she want me to do stuff that God told me to do. I'm like, God, come on. Why you ain't tell her what you told me? He said, because I told you I don't owe you no explanations. Do as I say. That's good. Amen. Yeah, that's good, Doc. Amen. And when I'm worried about what her response is, now I'm making her my God. Faith ain't my God. My God is my God. And you do what I told you to do. And uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, you're going to have to hold my hand while we walk it through. Because what she's giving me right now, I'm not really feeling it. Don't worry about that. I got her. And if it's a problem, come and get up early in the morning and come and talk to me. Let me and you read. Oh, hallelujah. Let's reason together. Yeah. Amen. There's something in that relationship that takes place. And when you put things in order after, a, a, see, it, here's the thing. We expect to go ahead and put things order in today and everybody just fall in line. you got a track record. You've been doing this for so long and now you expect her to be like, okay, I'm on board. <laughs> no, I don't work that way. That's right. And even when she see you start doing it right. She still might be bucking a certain, like, what's this? I, I yeah. never, I remember last year she, when she told me about myself and she told me, you're spending too much time in the office. You ain't spending enough time with the kids and me. You spend time, but it ain't enough. And I felt it. Yeah, yeah, and I felt that, that, right. that thing rising up in me, black. And, and, and I heard the Holy Ghost say, shut up and sit down and listen. Mm. This is why it's important for you to be able to be in a position to hear from God. Because usually I'll get defensive real quick. Well, you know what I'm doing? I'm hustling for the fam. I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I'm trying to put things in place so that we can never want for nothing. And kids don't care nothing about what you're doing. They just care about the memories. Remember when daddy took us here? Yeah. Remember when we went on vacation to this place? They don't care nothing about you working hard and none of that stuff at this age. And when I listened to her, she said to me, yeah. You you doing all of that stuff. And, and when, when I when I when I heard what I heard, I said, okay, cool. And all I asked her is that is that what I do for real? She's like, yeah, that's what you do, and here's how I feel about it. And I said, let's fix it. And she was like, <laughs> And she was like, You're not gonna get defensive? Nope. You're not gonna give me nope. She was blown. She was like, okay, what can I do to help? And I was like, well, help me, help you, help me, yeah. help you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Come into the Amen. office, revamp the calendar for me because you structured and you detailed. And now she came in, revamped the calendar in 15, 20 minutes, whatever it took me an hour and a half to two hours to do. Nico gets daddy Nico time. Zoe, when she decides to use it, gets her time. And she gets her time. And guess what? What was a perceived problem? It's no longer a problem. Yeah. Why? All right. Because surrender. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. Amen. Amen.